are back on Morning Line. Our guest, Davidson County Sheriff Darren Hall, taking some of your phone calls, and it wouldn't be right having him come on Morning Line without the first call <laughs> coming from Joe. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Nick. Hey. Good morning, Joe. Um, man, I tell you, y'all pretty well covered this protest, I think. I don't know much I could add to it other than, and I think Nick said it, uh, and the sheriff probably agreed with it. If nobody showed up of these idiots that was marching, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be nothing. They'd eventually go away. But, uh, uh, you know, the news media's caught in the middle of yeah, all this right. stuff, and it it, it I, it's what's really sad about it. Most of the news we're getting is bad news, is bad things that's going on, and every now and then we we'll get something that's that's good. It, and how long to hear that mm. again? Uh, for instance, the police department had their. Uh, Talent show. Talent yesterday. show, yeah. Yeah. This night, uh, the commander and their music and their <laughs> things. And it's, it's good for po the police department and people to see these are, these are real people. <laughs> they're right. not just policemen. They're real people like you and me and everybody else. Yeah. And sometimes there's good uh, things come out. And every now and then there's a bad one pops up. But the sheriff covered that pretty thorough, I think. And uh, one question I had for him is, besides the jail, when they get this monstrosity finished, <laughs> uh, is there going to be any other place that you're going to keep inmates besides at the jail? Like, I know you've got one on South Third or whatever, and, and places, a couple other places. Uh, is it all of them going to be in the jail once it's finished? Are you still going to have them uh, in other places also? Yeah, Joe is the, the most informed of all. He always helps me remember what's going on <laughs> and uh, does a great job. Really appreciate Joe. He, he, um, he represents what I think is, you know, the, 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 it really does. The, he keeps up with it. He knows what's going on. And like he said, you know, we, we, we have some negative things going on in the world and we need some need to remember some positives. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Joe, we, we will um, <clears throat> we'll finish with the, the sheriff's office. We'll have... We'll have three complexes when it's all over with. Um, there will be a southeast complex out off Harding that will have uh, 25 to 2,800 inmates out there still, regardless of what we're building downtown. There will be a downtown complex, which will have the new facility and the mental health center on it. And then we'll have a, a headquarters, which is going to be over off South 5th Street. That's what he was referring to. Used to be the old workhouse. Uh, we're moving out of that in the next two weeks. We're going to move up to the Memorial Hospital for two years uh, temporarily tear down the workhouse on South 5th Street and build a, uh, a, about a $25 million headquarters where our, our warrant division, our training divisions, our administration, all those That's folks will go be. live. Right. We'll, we'll live off South 5th Street. And, uh, so like, will there be like <coughs> cherry wood paneling in your office? <laughs> And you're getting like one of those really neat big wooden desks. And, and are you getting one of those ergonomically correct, relax the back type of adjustable chairs for your desk? I tell you what I'll do. I'll invite you in. You can be the first one to come see it. Um, <laughs> but I doubt it'll have any of your influences in it. Whatever you just said, I doubt any of those so will be your there. So will be on a budget. Yes, It'll yes. be responsible. Yes. yes. Not, it's, although, no, not completely fancy. Uh, it won't be fancy. But tasteful. A tasteful, maybe yeah, that's fair, and, and, and it might have a decent view. That's all I've noticed. View, that's, At the end of the city, be kind of right now. Who knows what's going to be built in the future? But yeah. the way the building is going to be built, it does have a, a really the whole building, not just my office, but is going to really look into the downtown nice. from South Fifth Street. Yeah, it's we're really looking forward. Our staff deserve it. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I've been here nearly 30 years. Um, the building we're in now is the old HG Hill warehouse, handed over I'll to the, over there. Yeah. yeah, it's just, and it's not bad. But the point is, we've been hand-me-downs everything, and and uh, I'm not talking about the jails, but our staff, our training center is an old, old jail turned into a training room, and um, our staff deserve better than that. We are better than that, and and thank goodness the city is is doing something about Will it. Will there be a break room like where there's coffee and stuff yes. in there? Will there be an ice machine that makes Sonic ice? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I, there will be an do, ice machine. You can find out before the next show if it's going to be the cubed ice or that really crunchy Sonic ice. I tell you what, 
I just wonder if you, I'm just I, I don't know if our viewers care, but I think that's an important thing. Well, the viewer, if they would see this illustrious green room and how fancy it is here, <laughs> we don't have Sonic Ice. Darn well, it. I don't know about Sonic Ice, but this the way y'all do your concessions and all, we literally stole that idea. I want to do it back at our place. It is pretty neat. It's a uh, where you pay of, as you go, and some of those yeah. you can pay with your thumbprint yeah. once you have a. I don't know if we still do that there. Once you have an account, yeah, yeah it's not bad. It's, it's fresh stuff actually. Some healthy stuff back it's, there. It's yeah, it's not just vending. It's it's really right. kind of daily looking stuff and to me and I, we we literally saw it over here years ago and and we have about 270 employees 24 hours a day working in that building and so you'll need something for them to eat and, and have and yeah so it's really a, a neat option versus a cafeteria or just vending machines the cool and, uh, thing about working in the jail is you get a little hungry you just go down to the mess hall with the inmates it, and that food's <coughs> not i mean bad i mean how do you mess up a bologna sandwich right All right right okay a bologna how do you mess it up would you, would you ever just hot collar it? Hey, Carla, run on down there and grab me up, rustle up one of those bologna sandwiches. No, for me. and, and you? just so you know, jail inmates don't call it bologna. It's mystery meat. <laughs> and, and so I'm not saying that's what we call it, but they call it mystery meat. So I don't know what the... Uh, <laughs> I still want to try some julep. <laughs> All right, let's go to Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, good morning. A buddy of mine got out of jail not too long ago, and uh, I gave him, uh, he came over, and I gave him a... Uh, a bologna. I had it made before he came over, and when he came over and he sat down, I gave him a bologna sandwich and one of those little plastic juice things that they give him in jail. I've never been there. And he got mad. That. I bet. He's like, "What are you doing? I want a steak and a potato." I want to talk to you, man. You know, when I was calling to talk to the sheriff, I'm always talking about. Uh, the diet and the menu and the food they serve. If, you, if he remembers me, the last couple times I've called him, I'm very particular about that. And um, what they should do is, along with, there's so many nonprofits in Middle Tennessee, you can't throw a rock without getting a nonprofit. And I'm sure they can get, get some of them. The problem is they get them fresh fruits and vegetables, and I don't know if they can get them in and, and get them out. With the new facility, they should be able to streamline that. What's up with that lawsuit over the jail about there being some kind of code? Well, I can't remember what, scabies or something? Yeah. And were you guys talking earlier about a sheriff's deputy being arrested or something? Or I know there was a policeman that was arrested. Yeah, that was uh, the separate one. That was the officer that was actually one of the heroes at the Antioch Theater yeah, shooting. Yeah. And there's some issues yeah. he's dealing with. But, uh, yeah, that was something else with another uh, officer, um, jailer, who's on administrative leave. We touched on that already. Yeah, we have 1,000 employees. Yeah. It's going to happen. And, I and I yeah, hopefully, oh, yeah. um, you know, we, we do our best to minimize that and deal with them when, when it comes up. But, um, yeah, Brian, Brian uh, I think what he was hinting to is, and I've had this before, you know, a lot of the, the restaurants and nonprofits around town, if you had food that was, let's say, not being used, could you use it in the jails to save money and various things? Um, to be honest with you, the, the jail is regulated so differently that people wouldn't realize the nutrition, the, the calories, the you know the special diets we've talked about from from religious meals to uh, medical requirements. It, it is so comprehensive as to how you're feeding your your meals. Um, yeah. It's not as easy as we would think uh, uh, to do it. And. Uh, people come to jail with all sorts of ailments, including their own belief systems, which make their meals different from others, and trying to manage all that. We serve over a million meals a year, and um, yeah, it's just a lot that goes through the, the system called kitchens, and it's not easy to, to just, if you if you said, hey, Darren, here's a truckload of uh, yeah, something cheese, comes I'd like in, to yeah. donate it. Um, that's a lot of work. You'd have to get it approved. You have to be incorporated in the diets. All these diets are, are planned out months Take ahead of time. Take that to the mission. Yeah, that's now, right. Now, you right. know, um, Sheriff Arnold, and I'm not sure if Sheriff Fitzhugh following up with him in Rutherford County, they've got property to yeah, do it you know yeah, the, right. they got the big cube jail there yeah, in the sheriff's yeah. department but then they've got some grass and you, did you have you seen where they have there's the uh, shooting range and right. then over here they had an area they cleared for a farm right. or crop and they grow and there's a little greenhouse i'm not sure if he's still continuing but they had production yeah. and some of the fresh vegetables could be used that's we just not that. an option is there is there an option because there's no place for you to plant a garden down here so what would you do we, we do it in, in antioch oh, okay. on the southeast complex so you have, we oh, have okay. that several years and uh and still? we turn Yes, and we turn that back over to Second Harvest Food Bank. See, the deal uh, okay. is okay. Well, all of cool what too. you grow, which is really good for the inmates and us, it's, and it's been a real productive program for both the, the, the Second Harvest and our staff and inmates. But but uh, to use that product is is more difficult to incorporate it so back in. So you couldn't bring that into your kitchen. It, yeah. It's more you're growing it. It's a great thing because you can provide it to right. another charity. Right. 
and they've it's, got something to do, but you're not right. eating it. You it's almost eat it. better to do it that way because to then take whatever you grow, uh, bring it back in to who is a private food company, have them require <laughs> them to incorporate it into their diet. It, it just becomes more comprehensive, and I, gotcha. I think the best way to do it is to provide the the labor around the gardening, and then turn all the product back over to the community in some way. It just it's uh, it's a fair question, but but the meals aren't as simple as you think. It's not like if you called me today and said I'll donate you know, uh, 500,000 hot dogs. Well, I can't just walk in and say, start feeding hot dogs. Right. It disrupts the, uh, the calorie amounts, the nutritional amount. Yeah, and it's all required on everybody there. It's a, it, I bet so your meals are probably planned days in advance. Yes, months. And they, months in advance, and it's just here this today. It's it throws today. everything off, and, and, and I'm not obviously a nutritionist, but that all has to be evaluated, the number of calories per inmate per day, and it's just very comprehensive meal service. That's interesting. I didn't know that about those guards, but that makes sense to me. You no. can't mess with that. Let's go to Robert. Hi, Robert. Robert. Good morning to you guys. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Robert. I have uh, two quick questions and one comment. Uh, first uh, question to you is, why is Tennessee consistently being rated uh, a very uh, a hate-filled state, like rate number seven as far as hate crime? And I remember like four years ago we ranked uh, number one is the most dangerous state by the FBI. Second, your opinions on Sheriff Joe Arpaio <laughs> and how a sheriff like that could get so uh, off the rail as far as his uh, power. And then the third is, I like that Winnebago you guys have. That is a really nice thing. And I would like to see you go to the community homes or projects and let little kids see that Law enforcement is cool, and being a sheriff deputy is even cooler. And mm. go to the neighborhood project and park your window Lego, and I think you could do a lot as far as kids and involved in law enforcement. Thank that's, you. That's great. Well, oh, Robert, okay. Yeah, I really can't speak to, I, I didn't see the, the listing you're talking about, Tennessee being rated that high in the hate crime area. I'm sure it's true or, or it, it's an accurate report. Um, one of the things that I, I would caution anyone to do is to go look and see what a hate crime or hate group is classified as. Mm. Uh, not, to, not to take away from the listing, but just to understand exactly how that works. You know, Tennessee is a, <clears throat> it's a very diverse state. I mean, you're talking about from the east to the west, the margins sure. of area of all of that is, is tremendous. You go, most states don't have that range, really. Um, and there's a lot going on. We have two primary Democratic communities, that is both Nashville and Memphis. Other than that, the state is primarily Republican. Pretty so much. it's diverse politically, it's diverse kind of ideologically. And, and so I think a lot of that is, is what people feel. And um, I don't, I'm not proud of that either. I don't know if, I think it's Robert's tone was that, that he's concerned about that. I'm, I'm not either. I, I don't think that's a very good thing. Um, and you would hope that we can grow beyond that. Our, our history here um, need, needs to be improved as it relates to, to those issues. Um, speaking of that, uh, I, I'm not a fan of at all of Joe Arpaio. I don't know sheriffs in the country, uh, any friends or peers of mine who ever really looked up to him uh, as, a, as a sheriff. I surely didn't. Well, there weren't um, too many that mimicked him. Right. See, that's the thing. That's the, If he was liked and such, would they have mimicked what he did? And they did. By the way, of course, we all know he would have probably gone to prison for a spell, but the president pardoned him. Right. And, and I think it's fair to say, I, I get emails, not anymore, but I get emails all the time, why can't you do what Joe's doing I, from, from members in the mm -hmm. community? Because they, they would buy into the rhetoric that he was putting people in tents and making them eat green bologna and making them wear pink underwear. and. These were all really, um, to me, kind of a shame type of, of, of system. And, and and quite frankly, it wasn't productive. It didn't work. And um, it brought lawsuits. Right. They were across the city. Across the, and, and then ultimately, what he was saying wasn't accurate. And, and um, uh, But anyway, uh, he's not someone I, I care a whole lot about at all. Um, Especially in the world of... And he's of, no longer sure. sheriff. He lost. Right, right. He lost. And uh, a lot going on out there now. Just read a great story about the person who beat him and what's going on kind of in the in Phoenix. Trying to change so, things back. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Big, big challenge. And um, Yeah, so the, the RV um, uh, on steroids, as I tell people, uh, <laughs> it is kind of like our mobile booking center. It does kind of have a, an environment where you could use it in an emergency situation. We have two of them. They're out about every night. Uh, we do go to schools. We go to events. I was at an event yesterday morning at 9 o'clock out in Hermitage. It was out there. Um, and, and, and I agree with Robert. We go to National Night Out Against Crime. We use it in all sorts of places to let you know, kids and family. And, and by the way, anyone in the community, if you hear this and you ever see it, 
stop and walk up and just say hello I'd like to see this you're you bought it it's the communities um, and unless we're in the middle of booking and processing someone we'll move everything and make make you it's yours and so um, you know to educate you to let you see how it works sure, that's and pretty neat yeah you yeah. need to do that I mean it would be good for anybody and uh, we even booked uh, Nick in it uh, way back when we first uh, opened it up. I don't remember that. Do you remember that? You can, Google, remember. you can Google him and find that. But, um, but it's more important that we're trying to do exactly what Robert asked. We, we want to be in the community as part of the community, and, and that's just one way we're, we're trying to do it. We'll take a break. As I recall, much to, the, to your relief, I was fully acquitted because you know your jail couldn't have held me. <laughs> it's that simple. And the thing is, we'll never know now because it's been torn down. It's pretty much acknowledged that jail couldn't. I would have been out of there on my own probably within 24 hours. Just pull up Google and you can hear him screaming as he was going out of this room. And everybody he works with was cheering us on. They were, man. They, they wanted, wanted you to, to take go. me away. No but, one would bond him out. <laughs> more calls. <laughs> go way back. That's fun. <laughs> we'll take more calls as we wrap up our final segment with the sheriff right after this. <laughs> There is no single answer to securing your financial future. You need to look at it from every side. Get dependable advice you can count on every week with the Retirement Report on News Channel 5 Plus. Experts on finance, taxes, and the legal system are ready to answer your questions. Don't wait to make a plan for your money. The Retirement Report, Friday mornings at 8 and at these encore times on News Channel 5 Plus. At Cigna Health Spring, we have one priority, you. So when you're looking for the right Medicare Advantage plan, we partner with you every step of the way. Cigna Health Spring plus you means our plans are designed around you with an approach to health care led by your doctor. Call Cigna Health Spring now to learn about your options and get a free guide. There's no obligation. Cigna Health Spring puts you first with plans that offer no monthly premiums, no primary doctor co-pays, prescription drug coverage, even dental and vision services. With a Medicare Advantage plan from Cigna HealthSpring, you'll enjoy one more advantage, a focus on preventive care designed to help you stay healthy. Medicare open enrollment is here. Choose a partner that puts you first, Cigna HealthSpring. Call 1-855-707-7179. That's 1-855-707-7179. Cigna HealthSpring, together all the way. Country Inns and Suites and News Channel 5 are proud to be the Military First this Veterans Day. Go to NewsChannel5.com slash Military First and nominate a deserving service member or veteran for his or her chance to win $1,000 and two free nights at Country Inns and Suites. Country Inns and Suites wants only the best for our best. That's why we launched the Military First program. It honors active service members, veterans, and their spouses with a preferred rate, the best available room at the time of check-in, and more. For more information, visit CountryInns.com slash Military. We are back on Morning Line. It is our final segment with Davidson County Sheriff Darren Hall. The number seven three seven seven five eight seven. I don't believe my the video of my arrest is on social media anymore. I think it's been wiped clean. That's not true. As a matter of fact, by the time we get back to the office, we'll just send it back to you and anyone else who wants to see it. I mean, it can raise its profile on Google. I mean, it used to be the number one thing. <laughs> I do have people. I think that's cost me a few jobs. <laughs> No, no, I've not been looking. I like it here at Channel 5. Let's go to Grady. Grady, good morning. Good morning. Uh, hey, Grady. Uh, you know, I'm mad enough I can wear a pink. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, if you had wings to hat on, you know, uh, this would be something that would hit a million views in just a short time. You know, uh, talking about good good surf deputies and bad surf deputies, the funniest thing I ever saw was when the female surf was trying to get in the old courthouse and somebody had to tell them that this is your new surf, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, when they build this underground uh, uh, thing at, uh, that they built the jail downtown, uh, Skull Shulman used to be able to carry you on a trip by all the tunnels that would go down to the river where they mm -hmm. used to have the uh, barrels of beer brought in the speakeasy. You could go to every speakeasy in front or side of it without ever hitting the street. <laughs> but uh, Officer Duke, my daughter still laughs, you know, about 
uh, St. Thomas used to have all the entertainment at the jail. So the first concert I went to was with my daddy in the jail. Yeah. You know, and of course, I had some good bologna sandwiches, they had some good salami sandwiches, which, you know, have been out all now. You can't serve people that anymore, you know. <laughs> but Officer Duke used to, used to get creative. He had a dog that would go out in the garden, he'd pick out a tomato and go out and get a head of lettuce and go out and get an onion and make him a salad. And then he'd start chasing his tail around because he wasn't in the right catalogs, you know. <laughs> I'll hang up with y'all's comments this morning. Uh, but he talked about fight uh, he was supremacist. My dad in law was one. He always told me, said, you know, he was full. Uh, a charter member and had the white suit and everything tell me not to mistreat my wife and I can believe him you know because I ain't going to stir up no trouble with him I'll hang up with the all comments this morning Thanks, Brady. You know, uh, he, I wrote down some notes as he was talking. Um, it, one thing that the public may not know that I'll, I found interesting, in 1982, when, when the, the, the then CJC was finishing, mm-hmm. kind of the, the ribbon cutting, uh, I, I wasn't working there uh, for a few years, uh, five or six years later, but uh, they had an event that night. It was called Jailhouse Rock. We've got pictures and we've got stuff. So it was, Faye Thomas was the sheriff, and I'm not, they have a full concert, and in, in they had Waylon Jennings, they had wow. Willie, Willie Nelson, They and it wasn't to the public, it was a kind of a surprise crowd, you know, you, you had to come see the open house for the jail, but, uh, and they got all these pictures of everybody in the world you'd imagine, yeah. and you know, I think they came out of the Opry and maybe Printer's Alley and came up here. And, and just and wandered and lived through the jail that night. I mean, it was just all over the building. It was wide open, and Lord, there was drinking, and there was all kind of uh, Lord knows what else was going on. But it was, That's, it was a I full didn't know that. Yeah. that is awesome. Jailhouse like, Rock. Any chance you will do that when the new one opens? Yeah, yeah there's no chance. None at all. No. I mean. Uh, you're gonna. You should have an open house for the new jail. Uh, we we may that do. would be neat. And, and there could be some non-alcoholic beverages and bring in some of the local talent to perform. No, I doubt I, that'll happen. It's not gonna happen. We, we, we it? will. It's not gonna. We happen. will open the doors. My, how we, uh, times have changed. <laughs> and what about? He's talking about the tunnels, which is kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, I, I thought it was so yeah. cool when they finally tore down the CJC. You could see that tunnel you told me about yeah. that goes between this and the old courthouse, yeah. right? And, and it's that's still, still there. there. We're going to use that it again. Be operational then. Still? Yes. Any we'll other? Use it again. And, and was he? Do you, and I know your father, former Councilman Durwood. Yeah. Hall, um, he uh, did he know about those tunnels you know, that I've went down that, that Skull Shulman would talk about smuggling the beer? I've heard that for years too, and I, and I've just grown to believe it. I don't think I'm I mean sure. there's some variation of, of a way you could get uh, get the, the beer back and forth or drinks, liquor, whatever back and forth. And now the irony is that uh, they're they're planning to build a if if the transit thing goes through a, a massive tunnel, I guess from yeah. from right right up here to to down past Broad. So yeah, you're gonna have to go underground nowadays. You know you can't. Well, you apparently know, we're all, all over this. Pipes and tubes, obviously, yeah. under a big city like this. And there's not going to no. be any new tunnels for the jail no. right, or anything along no. those lines. Very okay. expensive to do. I wanted to do that. Um, but Just for security reasons, right? Yeah, Maybe? it's a lot better way, safer way um, for everybody, but uh, it's extremely expensive to move all the apparatus underneath okay. the roads, and, and they tell me that it wasn't worth the cost. Okay. Um, I was going to mention uh, about high-profile inmates that they deal hmm. with. I guess the most high-profile inmate of late is uh, Emmanuel uh, Samson, the, uh, right. the church shooter there. And, uh, you know, he had a court hearing. He did not make an appearance, but he's incarcerated in the Davidson County Jail. I guess you were telling me that he's uh, not on suicide watch, right. um, though there were, had been reports that prior to this incident that he had been suicidal. Hmm. What, what do you have him in technically? Hmm. It would be like a restricted area? Is isolated? Yeah, he, um, uh, he would have been on what you would refer to as, as a suicide watch the first 72 hours okay, or so. Yeah. Any high-profile nature like that or someone who had any history which I, I I'm, I'm familiar with what you're talking about so yeah he was under what you would call suicide watch as an observation there are levels of that that occur the mental health staff basically advise us as to when they're comfortable with him living without direct suicide watch in a lot of ways is just direct observation how yeah. often am I watching you is, is a is one way of looking at a camera video maybe or no, where you, can, um, so you have to have someone physically yeah, go personal, look. right and, and, okay. and, and now there's other things if you're on a, a very serious level of that um, where your clothing and other things that you could use to harm yourself have to be taken away but ultimately he's in a, in a situation called restrictive housing he is alone he is observed on, on a regular occurrence and and but but um, and being seen by mental health staff throughout this whole process and and 
you know, it, there's no real magic here. A lot of times mental health uh, relies on what you tell them. I mean, the individual and where are, how do you feel and what is your state of mind. And, and so um, there's no simple way of, of diagnosing mental mm -hmm. illness beyond your behavior and what you're telling us. And so a lot of times that's what we're trying to do is to get a, a, a level of understanding of how you are. Uh, look at this situation where he went from freedom mm -hmm. to a very tragic, obviously, series of events for everybody, and all of a sudden he wakes up in an institution and, and probably won't won't go out or won't be out for many, many, many years, if ever. Mm -hmm. and, and so the point of all that is very um, uh, traumatic uh, from a mental health standpoint. If a person doesn't oh, seem yeah. affected by it, that would bother you. Sure, you're like, what? well, that'd be kind of scary even more right. so there. Right, if they're very remorseful, then you got to worry about it. So it's just a very difficult transition from freedom to to the, the, the situation that he's in. And and then again, we got to protect him from himself, which is what you're talking about. We have to protect him from other people who aren't happy with what he did. Right. And, and then the other people from him in case he wants to do something else That's too, where you so wonder too. if it's a higher level of security. You always have to right. do that for inmates. But with this, and it hasn't been declared yet exactly as motive, some have wondered based on a letter left, right. it was a retaliation maybe for what Dylan Roof did at the, the black church in Charleston, South Carolina. We, we don't know if it's a hate crime. It's right. just Department looking into it. There are plenty of people who think there is. And there probably are some nutcases out there that would like to go after him. Right. So he did not make a court appearance. I think it was yesterday, the day before. He waived it, and his lawyers were there. Um, but uh, when he goes places, um, on, mm. uh, do, do you put him in a bulletproof vest? Um, do, uh, you have the security as best you can, but someone could take a pot shot from far away. Right. Typically, you would do that if the public were aware he was going to such a hearing. You see these folks who get out of a car, which is the most mm -hmm. ridiculous thing, and, and, and unfortunately, small towns can't avoid right. it. But you have to pull up on the side of the road and then walk the guy in. And I mean, I just saw this with um, was it the Bobo case? Maybe where oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to go from the courthouse to the to the vehicle. You're you're wide That's right. Open Zach Adams public. had to do that. That's right. correct. So in those cases, you'd want to do that to protect from some kind of sh shooter or whatever. But but in our world, we we don't want anyone knowing where we're going, and we don't want to be in the public view with him. And so, so you get uh, him into the courthouse right. by we go in, underneath, underneath the facility, that's and right. there's a there's elevators and movements where. And so that's the goal. Obviously, he may at some point have to go to the hospital or to a public setting, but we don't even want to know when we're going. And there's and no reason the media or anyone else should know right, that. Right. You know, I mean, we know when there's a court hearing, but that's public. Right. Beyond that, though, there's all kinds of movement no one knows about. Yes, and it's the most dangerous thing we do. Right. We're, pr we're pretty good in a secure environment. That's what we do. But when you're asking us to go into an environment like a hospital or even a courthouse in mm -hmm. a setting that, that's not necessarily fully controlled by our access and so forth, that, that's always risky. But he, um, you know, and would be would be supervised by by more than one person. There's a lot involved with with his movements, and and then the technology is today that there's a lot of this that can be done on video. Not a trial, but right. but a lot of the hearings. Typically, we want that. We yeah. encourage that because we're not having to take him out, and it doesn't put anyone else at risk. And so uh, some judges here in town use it, others don't, and um, and and we we encourage people to use that when it's not a critically important that the physical body be in the courtroom. Gotcha, sheriff. As always, it is a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. Um, I guess here. we'll uh, see you uh, again in about a month or so. But, uh, good. Thank you for coming on. So well, it's a pleasure, you. and uh, we'll sure. be in touch. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I'll wrap things up with a programming note about tomorrow, right after this.